Because the entire chapter of Romans 8 will reveal our status as conquerors, not because we've somehow done anything, but because of what has been done on our behalf. Nevertheless, I think it behooves us to zoom in on just one verse of this wonderful chapter, and that verse, as many of you have already guessed, is verse 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. All of what things? Read the chapter. Over what things have we conquered? Read the chapter. How can we be called conquerors when we get defeated so easily and so often? Read this chapter, but especially the final two verses that follow this one. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this, dear ones, is the source of our hope, that he loved us. But to worship God falsely makes the anger of God burn as fiercely as worshiping false gods. But there is something we must understand about God's anger. It is perfect. Like everything else about him, God is only able to be perfectly angry. Just as he is perfectly loving and perfectly just and perfectly providing and perfectly perfect, God in his anger is perfect. But believe this, there is no sin in a Christian's life that has a hold on him or her. The only holding is done by us. We hold on to the sin we ought to let go of. But it cannot hold us because the Holy Spirit has cleaned the house. And it has no home there anymore. Moses thought he was convincing God, but in fact, he was teaching himself and us this point, that the Word of God is powerful. And he will never let it be proven false.